We often see robot friend characters in movies and anime. They have been a staple in the world of fiction for a long time now. And today, we see frequent news reports about the many companies that are developing robots. But think about it for a moment. In your own daily life, have you seen any of these robots? Smartphones suddenly came into use everywhere, and self driving cars are gaining popularity. But strangely, we only see robots being used in factories for industrial purposes, or for things like cleaning or serving food at the table. Why haven't robots been seamlessly integrated into our lives? Is the technology not advanced enough yet? It seems like that can be the only reason.、Uh, we human beings have been trying to introduce robots into our living space since the late 1960s, but even though a half century has gone by,、uh, robots have not been a part of the, our lives. Why?、Uh, perhaps we are the ones refusing them. These are the thoughts of a cognitive scientist, Professor Takanori Komatsu, of a major university. He analyzes human agent interaction and the relationship between people and artifacts, mainly focusing on cognitive aspects of the users. But what did Professor Komatsu mean by we are actually the ones refusing robots? This means that, that there is a possibility that、uh, we unconsciously feel creepy, uncanny, or the sort of uneasiness about the robot. For instance,、uh, we sometimes can see the picture and the drawings of the yeah, like a human being and the robot shaking hands with each other t h e y r e in science magazine or the flyer of the robot related event. But we may not be actually thinking, like,、uh, let's make friends with the robot. So, I would like to clarify our view or the perception of the robot, that especially in terms of the two. The feelings of the robot versus public stances. In order to do this, Professor Komatsu conducts unique research in which he uses thought experiments and analyzes the data he collects. One famous thought experiment is called the trolley problem. A runaway trolley is barreling towards all workers on the tracks. If someone who is near the railroad switch pulls the lever, The trolley will switch tracks and the four people will be saved. But there is one worker who is on the other track, and that person will definitely be struck. So, should that someone who is by the switch pull the lever and change the track? Is it better to sacrifice one person's life to save the other four? Does ethic allow us to harm unrelated people? This is a very difficult problem. But let me ask you another question. What if that someone was actually not a human? You guessed it, that someone is a robot. What do you think it should do? By placing a robot in thought experiment, which are about moral dilemma, so we can see how people perceive robot. So, in the case of the trolley problem, we usually blame robots more than people、uh, in the case of making the decision not to intervene but to let their four workers die. So, in other words, we seem to assign different moral norms to humans and robots. As for the perceptions of robots we have, surely they must be influenced by our culture and customs, right? Professor Komatsu conducted joint research with American University professors comparing Japanese and American responses to the trolley problem.、Uh, when we asked the participants in the experiment, such as whether a robot can be held morally accountable or not, the answers show the differences between Japan and the US. In the US, the many participants reported that they are skeptical about the robot's capacity or the abilities, like a robot would not be able to make their, this kind of serious decision in the first place. On the other hand, there are, we find that Japanese people have a stronger tendency to accept robots as an autonomously acting agent. This study revealed that the degree of blame was the same in both countries if the robot does nothing and let the four workers die. As you know, the manga or anime about various kinds of robots are quite popular in Japan. So it's said that this makes Japanese people have a strong affinity for the robot. Therefore, this result was quite surprising and fascinating for me, because this clearly shows the differences between the true feelings and the public stances about the robot. 
Does this mean that welcoming robots into our daily lives, the way we see them in the movies, is just a fantasy that will never come true? Originally, the robots are supposed to be here to serve us. But right now, the only one that we are accepting into our home are the just pet robots, but which are actually do not do anything. So this is completely opposite of their original purpose. If a user of the robot is happy, and moreover, if the robot is by no means perfect, but I think that's good enough. So as robot appearance are getting more similar to human being, we also become more sensitive to the difference with us. Similarly, the more there is a gap between the impression we get from a robot appearance and its actual function, the more we will be disappointed with robot. If it has eyes and mouth and ears, people expect that it can talk like a human being, or if it has nice hands, they expect that it can carry things. So, on the other hand, even if the robot uh, looks like it cannot do much, but it works properly. Uh, in that case, uh, people will have a uh, better impression. So this means that it will be more important to understand how humans perceive robots before trying to implement the latest technology in the dark. When he was a university student, Professor Komatsu actually researched robot mechanisms. As I continued my research at graduate school where I study abroad, I gradually come to realize the limit that what robots can do. For example, the robots uh, need to be taught everything from 1 to 10, but we humans can do a tremendous variety of things by means of their ability to apply ourselves without being taught everything. I thought that if we want to make a really smart robot, so we should know more about human being. And this was the starting point of my interest in cognitive science. So why aren't robots who are like friends common in our lives yet? The reason might be because of the way we feel. Developing a robot that can communicate as well as humans and that can do everything is a kind of the dream of the scientist, but whether it will truly satisfy humans' demand or not is a completely separate issue. So I never want to deny the technology itself, but whether I believe that the robot will be better for us if we can understand the better human beings are characteristics by ourselves. I believe that there is still the plenty of rooms to consider from our human side. Uh, especially in order to achieve their ideal human-robot relationships. If we could know how human users feel about or perceive the robot, this robot can surely be useful to us in some way, even if it is by no means perfect. This forward-looking research is working to find a way for us to live together with robots.